Let's read it out loud. Ready? Read. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we shall pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. And he that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Say amen to that. Amen. Something very important here. Um, you see where it says, likewise the Spirit. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's capitalized. So it's the Holy Spirit. It says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Well, this infirmities here means weaknesses or lack. How many know sometimes in our lives we have weaknesses and lack? And it says, um, what lack of weaknesses are we talking about? Look what it says. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now here's something right here that the body of Christ got messed up on. And it says, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, what? Itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Itself. The Spirit itself. The Spirit itself. The Holy Spirit is not a it. And before we get into, I'm talking about today, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But before we get into all of the groanings and getting to things happening and, and move like Jesus, and we got to understand that we have to redefine the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of people, you know, say the Holy Spirit is an it because they read it. But because this right here is not in the original text. Because the original text in the Greek, that's where the Amplified Bible comes from. And look what it says over there in 26. It says, for we, um, for we, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid, bears us up in our weaknesses. We do not know what prayer to offer, nor to, how to offer it worthily as we are, but the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplications and plead on our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings. Too deep for utterance. You want to get to a point where we're praying to God in the spirit, tapping into groanings, um, releasing emotional, compassionate, you know, outbursts, not saying it with your words, but yet your groaning, your compassion, we want to get to that, but we can't seem to get everybody there yet because everybody don't know who the Holy Spirit is. Mm. He is not a it. He is not a shake. <laughs> he, everybody do that. <laughs> That's not the Holy Spirit. You may do that as a result of the Holy Spirit. When I was coming up, somebody would get up and start shaking and speaking in tongues. And we ain't seen that much in church. We said, that was the Holy Ghost. That wasn't the Holy Ghost, that's a word, act. there was an effect of the Holy Ghost. There was an act because of the Holy Ghost. But if you're going around and think the Holy Ghost is an it, the Holy Ghost is a shake, the Holy Ghost is power, the Holy Ghost is not power. The, the, he's the person behind the power. And if you don't know that, then we're sitting around here ignoring the most important person that Jesus said he's left us. Because we don't know he's a person. That's why when you get up in the morning, the first thing you don't say is good morning, Holy Spirit, because you really don't think he's a person. But once you know he's a person, he's he. Uh, you're able to actually uh, benefit from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He, he can be grieved. He, can, he has emotions. He's a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. My God. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not emotion. The Holy Spirit is not outburst. The Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. No. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. Somebody said the dove. Everybody around around here with a dove. Because you saw that Jesus went in the water and rose up and the Holy Spirit sent it to him as a dove. It was the shape of a dove, but it wasn't a dove. Why are you saying that? Because religion is messed up because the enemy, he don't mind us 
knowing that the Holy Spirit is this, but he don't want you to know that he's in, he want to be intimate with you. He want to have a close relationship with you. Some of the issues and situations we're going through is because we haven't acknowledged him, because we make decisions without saying, what do you say, Holy Spirit? We don't worship the Holy, we worship the Holy Spirit, but you don't, get, you don't glorify him. Hmm. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He said, he will, glo he will glorify me. In other words, the Holy Spirit, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, people always glorify Jesus. They're giving Jesus the praise. They're, they're, they're giving him the credit. We don't give the Holy Spirit the credit because he said he's not going to take the credit. We worship him because he's God. But you don't give him credit, you give Jesus credit. Mm. Jesus said because he is a substitute of me. If you ever you went to class and all of a sudden the teacher didn't come, but the substitute came. Jesus said, I'm sending a substitute just like me. I'm sending, I'm sending me. And I was the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. In other words, I don't think church folk got it yet. Because the main thing he wants to do is speak to us and talk to us and, and fellowship with us. And yet we come to church, we live every day, and we're ignoring the most important person on the earth for you, man. And the Lord said, you know, you're excited about the groaning. Stay there, talk about the groanings and what that is. He said, but if you ignore this, you know, they'll go through all the actions of it, but they won't experience it because people don't have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. So you need to know, let them know that so they can begin to, talk about it, and then show it to him in the word. Because I like that where it says, it says, the spirit himself. Not the spirit, not itself. The spirit himself. My God, I like that. You know, he's not a it. Look somebody say, next time you say it, I'm going to slap the weave off. Say that. <laughs> he's, he's not. I got to get, get this into you. Because people, you know, it, you know, you know. No, he no it. Amen. He's a person. He's, he's more real than the person that's sitting next to you. He's alive. He has emotions. He, he can be grieved. He's a real person. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The same God, but three different functions. It's God functioning as the Father, God functioning as the Son, and God functioning as the Holy Spirit. He's the one that has an assignment and ability to function on the earth. If anything's going to be done on the earth, the Holy Spirit is what's going to manifest it. He's the first one that showed up in the Godhead. God said, in the beginning was the Word. And all of a sudden, in the beginning, uh, back there in the beginning, before anything, the Holy Spirit was hovering over, and you know, because why? And then God said, let there be light. And the Holy Ghost took off and began to make whatever he said. The Holy Ghost is the one responsible for your results in your life, but you got to know him as a person. You got to talk to him. You got to be with him. Mm. He's your close companion. Wow. And so we got to understand that. Amen. He's the person behind the power. The reason why you see power in my life is not because I magnify power. I magnify the person behind the power because it's the person behind the power that caused the power to show up. You know, just because you know you have power, your power can't, it's not going to be free to move because we don't see him as a person. We don't talk to him enough. It's like um, you, we, we, we're forced to talk to him. It's like prayer hour a day. Okay, I got my hour in. What if you was in a relationship and I come to Sister P and all of a sudden now I say, okay, I'll talk to you one hour. No more. Don't talk to me no more today. <laughs> Is that a relationship? <laughs> Amen. If she ain't going to talk to me, she's going to find somebody to talk to. I'm going to have to break his neck. <laughs> Amen. You got to have a relationship. Amen. Talk to him. Somebody say you pray an hour. Mm -mm, I pray all day. What do you mean? All day I'm talking to him. Hey, how you doing? What do you think about that? Praise God, Holy, Holy, Holy Ghost. Amen. Think about this. What do you think, Lord? Uh, whatever I'm dealing with, I know you got me. Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Do the most thing I can write, but you know. 
I'm going to, what are you doing? If you get this, you're going where no man's ever gone before. Maybe the issue of why you're not seeing the finished works of Jesus, because you're ignoring the most important person that Jesus left. And he can be grieved. Somebody said, how can he be grieved? He said, let, not, let, uh, let all bitterness, indignation, wrath be put from you, banish from you. And then he said, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. In other words, you are sealed. He's in there. Don't grieve him because he's a person. How many people in wrath and anger Bitterness, saying things you ain't supposed to say, and you grieve. It's almost like you you silence him because he ain't going nowhere. Because he promised, I'm never gonna leave you. But I can't really get your manifestation of what you're praying for. I'm grieved because I want you to be blessed. I have all of this power in you, and it can't really benefit you because you grieve me, and yet you you don't even know who you have. Somebody said the most important thing is to go tell somebody you're sorry. No, the most important person you need to tell you're sorry is the Holy Spirit. Because <laughs> he's going to be with you when everybody else leaves you. Yeah. 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 You do something you're supposed to do, you say, oh, forgive me, Holy Spirit. Because I don't want to grieve you. I need you. I need you to tell me what to do. And you said you will bring all things to my remembrance. Uh, so I need you when I'm going the wrong way. I need you to tell me the road is out. I need you to talk to me and tell me, don't worry about that. Brush yourself off, keep going. Because truth being told, everybody sitting up in here, you ain't been all that. And you would have left Jesus and gone out there because everybody condemning you. You feel bad, the devil. But somebody talking to you saying, it's going to be okay. Get up. Brush yourself off. Keep on going because I'll never leave you enough forsake you. The Holy Spirit's job is to be with you wherever you go. Some of you say, I went to the club. He went to. Somebody said, I did something. I ain't supposed to do it. He went to. He ain't going to get out of the lottery line while you buying that ticket. He going to be with you forever. He is the Holy Spirit, and he is God, and you can't send him away. Somebody said, be quiet. You know, back in the day, they were like, be quiet, only a whisper. You may run him away. No, you can't. He's sealed. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> That's the power of the blood of Jesus. That's what Jesus did. Amen. Now, it's a shame to have him and you and don't take advantage of and don't win in life. You're losing every battle with the answer in you. And the Lord said before you go on, before you talk about any more groanings, and I'm going to talk about this groaning, and I'm going to talk about this compassion because the Holy Spirit is behind that, it's his ministry, but you got to understand who he is. He's not just for the preacher. Mm. He for you. He, he talking to you right now. You just don't know. You too busy in your head. You let New York City traffic at 12 o'clock in your head. And you got everything going on. But if you get, it's a still small voice. If you come back and just get some time with him and just shut off everything else and say, Lord, I'm just going to talk to you. And in this talk, I'm not going to do all the talking. Because some of us think if you're spiritual, if you go pray in turn for an hour and do all the talking. The most important thing about what you say is not important. The most important thing about prayer is what he says. So pray and pray that you may interpret because what he, one word from God can change the whole situation. Say amen to that. So, so I'm, 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 I'm gone here. <laughs> how, many, how many going on this road trip with me with the Holy Ghost? <laughs> amen. But look what Jesus said. This is how, just get in the Bible. Look at Jesus said. Look at Rome, look at John 
Um, John 14 first. Look at that. Just a little bit. I know I, know I can't preach it all. Hey, God. Look what it says here in John. John 14, do you have it? And look at verse, look at verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father, here's Jesus. Now, who's talking? Jesus is talking because it's in red. He said, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he, not it, he shall teach you, what? All things, and what? Bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. This is, the, this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He wants to teach you all things. Think about this. He's all-knowing. Good God. Everything you deal with, he knows the answer. He want to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. In other words, there are some things that he said in his word. You, you, you might forget, but he can bring it to your remembrance. He can bring everything to your remembrance, what he said to you. Amen. The Holy Ghost can even bring to your remembrance when you're taking a test. Amen. I said he'll bring it to your remembrance. So that means if you ain't steady, don't look for the Holy Ghost to tell you nothing. Because he's going to bring to your remembrance what you have studied. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you know you, st you ever study something, you know, but you just can't think of it right now. The Holy Spirit's job is to bring not just that, but everything to your remembrance. There's a, there's a job that the Holy Spirit want to do. He want to bring everything to your remembrance. And I like this Amplified Bible. It says, but the comforter. See, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. Mm. It says, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener. Stand by. My God, I got to say that one more time. Look at it. Look at somebody say, this is all in you. He, this is all in you right now. He's a person, but he's a comforter. He's a counselor. My God. That means he give guidance. He, he's the advisor. One of, one of the words for counselor is expert. He's the expert at everything you deal with. Oh my God. How many ready to serve an expert? I mean, he'll guide you. He's your counselor. Thank God for the, everybody else who can counsel you, but there ain't no counselor like the Holy Ghost. Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But, <laughs> but he's a counselor. My God. He's a helper. He assists you. He aids you. He supports you. He's your partner. He'll help you. Somebody say, I'm about to give up. Wait a minute. You got a helper. Somebody said, I'm about to quit. Wait a minute, you got a helper. Somebody said, I'm not qualified for that job. Don't matter, you got a helper. Somebody said, I'm about to pray. I don't know what to pray for. Don't worry about that. You got a helper. He's the Holy Ghost who will take your prayer to the Father and send the angels and bring it to you. Somebody said, I got a helper. People don't even got time for you. Everybody, you know, I am tired of them. But the Holy Ghost won't ever get tired of you. He's your helper. Nobody else might not help you, but he's your helper. All you got to do is acknowledge him and recognize him, and he's getting to help in whatever you need help in. Everybody's looking to a man to help you. You don't need no man. You need the Holy Ghost. He'll help you. Somebody said, I need to pay this tuition in college. I, I, I got the grades, but I don't have the money for the down payment. I want to go to school where you need to trust the Holy Ghost. He is a helper. He knows how to get that grant. He knows how to get that support. He knows the person to meet in Walmart at 12 o'clock. Oh, Lord. He knows. Don't you tell me I got to be limited. I serve an unlimited God, and whatever I need, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. He's a helper. My God. I like this. Look at that. I'm trying to say he's an intercessor. Oh, Lord. 
He's the one that steps in and takes your place. Oh, have mercy. He's an advocate. And the one that speaks on your behalf. In other words, he's the defense lawyer. By God, y'all ain't ready for me up in here. He's the defense. You don't have to say nothing. All you need to do is show up. And he got your back. He's a defense lawyer. You don't go there doing all no talking. Let him talk when you're in the court. If you're in the courtroom of life, tag the Holy Ghost. He is a defense lawyer. He knows how to talk to the father. Go over there to the prosecuting defense and tell him, you better not say nothing. The Holy Ghost know how to work on your behalf. The enemies can't stand up against the Holy Ghost. He know too much. I'm preaching up in here. Somebody show I got a defense lawyer. Live it in me. He is the Holy Ghost. Amen. I felt my help right there. That's when you said, when he's an advocate, that's who in you. We don't, we don't benefit. We don't know that. You're never going to be defeated. My God. He is, look what it says, strengthen them. See the Amplified Bible? Put up there the Amplified Bible, um, um, John 14, 26, Amplified. Turn it back and look at it. Let me act like I'm on TV. <laughs> Look at that. He, he is a counselor, a helper, a intercessor, an advocate. Somebody said, my defense lawyer. And look at that, a strengthener. Don't tell me you about to, you so weak you about to give up. I know why, because you haven't spent time with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit get that tightness off you. The Holy Spirit will rejuvenate you. The Holy Spirit will cause you to get strong and take a licking and keep on ticking. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Because all of the stuff, all of the H-E-L-L you done been through in the last five years and look around and you still here. I tell you why you still here. Because the Holy Ghost Keep you strong right in the midst of a test. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why? Because the Holy Ghost got you. You can take a licking and keep on ticking. You can get a bad report and override it and speak to the mountain and tell it to go. You can be attacked by the enemy. You can still show up on Sunday and spit in the devil's eye. Why? Because I took every shot. I took every test. I'm going through and I'm still here. And I'm not here because I know somebody. I'm here because he's on the inside of me. When I feel like I'm about to give up, he strengthens me. When I feel like I can't make it no more, he pushes me a little further. Hey, hey! Jesus said, it is expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, I can't send him. See, I can only benefit you when I'm here now. But right now, I'm about to get the Holy Spirit to not only affect you, but affect every person in every state, every all over the world. Everybody can be with me at the same time through the Holy Ghost. He can be in me. He can be in you. He can be in every preacher. He can be in every believer at the same time. Releasing strength on the hills. Look at somebody and slap them with a high five and tell them, I'll never give up. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. I never give up. I never quit. I can take a lick and keep on ticking. I never go back. 
Yeah, even when I fall, I rise up again because I never quit. I got the Holy Ghost on the inside. He strengthens me when I'm weak, when I'm lonely, when I'm confused. Because everybody lying if they say every time you come to the Lord, everything will be all right. Sometimes you come to the Lord, oh, hell may break loose. You might think that, what's wrong with me? Now I'm telling you, the devil knows he's trying to put pressure on you. He's trying to get you to quit. He's trying to get you to look at the natural. He, he knows, he look at you and said, guess what? There's too much in you. I see your future. I got to come against you. I got to get you to quit. Somebody else ain't going to do nothing, but I know you're going to do something. I'm going to keep the pressure on you. But what the devil don't know, I got a strengthener on the inside. The devil don't know. I got an advocate that'll talk to me. The devil don't know. I got a cup. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal Savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong right now. I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.